हेलो एवरी वन सो टूडे आई विल डिस्कस अबाउट अल्टीमेट एनालिसिस ऑफ सैम्पल इन द प्रीवियस वीडियो वी डिस्कस्ड अबाउट प्रॉक्सीमेट एनालिसिस ऑफ अ सैम्पल एंड द सैम्पल वी टुक वॉज कोल इट्स अ फ्यूल सैम्पल राइट सो इन द प्रॉक्सीमेट एनालिसिस वी सॉ दैट द रिजल्ट वर वेरिंग इट वॉज अप्रॉक्सीमेट एंड इट डज नॉट गिव यू मेजर रिजल्ट राइट रिलेटेड टू द एलिमेंट्स इट वॉज ओनली फोकसड ऑन परसेंटेज मॉइस्चर परसेंटेज वॉलेटाइल मैटर परसेंटेज एश and then percentage fixed carbon is calculated uh, on that basis right so today what we are going to do is to discuss what is better method of analyzing the sample which is ultimate analysis and as a part one of that i am going to discuss today to find out how uh, like percentage carbon and hydrogen can be estimated in a sample however ultimate analysis helps you in finding carbon hydrogen oxygen nitrogen and sulfur all so let us start with part 1 in coming videos i'll be discussing all other elements again percentage nitrogen is already posted on my youtube channel uh, zeldel method is used to find out this percentage nitrogen so let us stick uh, to carbon and hydrogen for today so if the coal sample has carbon and hydrogen your aim is to find out how much carbon and how much hydrogen is present in the particular sample so that you can select that sample accordingly so now for that you have to use liebig's apparatus the liebig's apparatus is used to uh, combust to the particular sample of coal and extract c in terms of co2 and h in terms of h2o out of it now there are many versions of liebig's apparatus if you'll find it on net uh, but the basic principles remain same so i have used all of the three pictures here to give you a clear glimpse of how does liebig apparatus work basically it would be having a combustion tube so here you can see that tube is present right and the same thing here you can see uh, combustion tube is there so overall a combustion tube is there in all of the three things then you have a oxygen supply here also you can see and here also you can see so ultimately in the combustion tube you have to supply a oxygen that is what obviously combustion uh, takes place in the presence of oxygen and the second important thing is obviously your sample so here you can see the sample right and here you can see the sample and obviously here you can see the sample so let's say i have to take coal as a sample and let's say i measure that it is 1 gram so i'll take that coal sample in this dish here and you can see your aim obviously is to heat it under the presence of oxygen so that the combustion takes place right so you can see the combustion chamber here here you can see the combustion chamber and here you can see the combustion chamber so basically in the combustion chamber you are supposed to heat your sample in presence of oxygen now as per the reaction i hope you understand that uh, c is going to uh, react with the oxygen so now if i want to convert that uh, the reaction would be this and if i want to convert hydrogen uh, the reaction would be this now to manage uh, you may write it like this right uh, so what happens is when you take your coal sample here and you have to undergo the combustion process right so uh, combustion takes place uh, with the help of some catalyst so copper oxide is normally uh, act as a catalyst which is used so you can put your copper oxide here in presence of copper oxide the reaction takes place but what happens in this combustion chamber is you can use two gauges in order to help you like if you can see here gauge uh, copper oxide gauge and placed before and after the combustion chamber so before the combustion chamber copper oxide gauge is placed here you can also use a silver gauge here because this gauge is basically uh, used to prevent the dust and dirt to come inside the combustion chamber because you are allowing your oxygen to come from here right so you need pure and dry oxygen it should be dry it should not have moisture it should be pure it should not have those impurities so this silicon gauge or copper oxide gauge placed in the starting of the combustion chamber is going to help uh, to get that pure and dry oxygen inside now once the reaction started and the oxidation starts the combustion starts the gases are going to come outside of the chamber 
so here also you have to place a gauge which is going to ensure that the complete combustion has taken place because you are changing c to co2 but it may happen that partial oxidation take place and it becomes co carbon monoxide so this copper oxide gauge second gauge what does the, it do it helps in complete combustion of your product so it will ensure only co2 and h2o to go further so it will only allow these two gases to go further so what happens in this combustion chamber is i think you understood you need to combust the coal sample in the presence of catalyst which could be copper oxide and with the help of two gauges you ensure that the oxygen which is coming inside is also pure and the gases which are coming outside are only co2 and h2 now you can see in all of the three uh, apparatuses uh, you have a youtube here and here so what you do is you have to get these things absorbed h2 and co2 and for that in the first youtube you can have an anhydrous calcium chloride so anything anhydrous like here also magnesium percolate anhydrous magnesium percolate uh, chloride is used so uh, magnesium perchlorate or calcium chloride are basically a dehydrating agent so what they'll do is they'll absorb the moisture so as soon as this reaction takes place and the molecule goes outside the water molecule molecule will be absorbed here in the first ut right and then you allow the same gas to pass through the next chamber the next ut contains koh and here also obviously koh absorbs a uh, carbon dioxide gas so it is used here to absorb co2 gas so the co2 gas will be absorbed and uh, similarly here in this first uh, apparatus uh, an hydrous magnesium perchlorate is kept because we want h2o to get absorbed here and if the gas goes to the next youtube chamber here uh, you'll be having koh solution so co2 would be absorbed here and in that reaction also h2 is formed so next cacl2 is going to absorb that h2 let me go to the reaction uh, first uh, so koh absorbs that co2 it forms this and calcium chloride absorbs moisture and it forms this so it absorbs the moisture while it absorbs co2 so what happens here is like if, if you want to revise the entire setup you are supplying your oxygen gas from here you are having your coal sample here you just have to heat it in presence of copper oxide uh, catalyst you just have to place two gauges here just to ensure that the pure and dry oxygen is coming in and co2 and h2 are coming out right from here so when the gas is comes here you just have to uh, keep uh, like uh, maybe an hydrous calcium chloride so what you have to do is you just have to pre wait uh, the compound and once it absorbs the h2o you again wait it so there will be some increase in the weight of uh, calcium chloride so whatever is the increase in the weight of calcium chloride that is uh, nothing but the amount of h2o so here in the calcium chloride uh, your increase in the weight uh, you have to measure and here if koh is there increase in the weight you have to measure so you just have to uh, let's say uh, x gram is the increase in the weight and here y gram is the increase in the weight and you have taken the coal sample and let's say it is w gram in weight so now you want to know how much uh, percentage carbon and hydrogen is present in the coal so what you have done is you have undergone the combustion calcium chloride is going to absorb the moisture so before uh, combustion and after combustion weight if you will take off calcium chloride you will get the increase in weight and this increase in weight is proportional to the amount of h2o formed and similarly for co2 you will apply the same method that uh, before uh, absorption you will weigh the koh after absorption you will weigh the koh whatever is the increase in the weight that will be corresponding to the amount of co2 formed so i think uh, now it is very clear to you what are we going to do we are going to supply the pure and dry oxygen gas you have to take the sample here with the help of catalyst and gauges you will make sure that the combustion takes place and then you have to get the uh, gases absorbed one by one so here uh, you are going to like absorb h2o and here you are going to get co2 absorbed one by one and uh, let us now do the calculations like once they are absorbed you want to know how much carbon is there so let's say that the sample you have taken is w there is increase in the weight of cacl2 which is x gram and then there is increase in the weight of koh also which is y gram so now if you see to the reaction c plus o2 from co2 we can simply say say that the 44 parts by weight of co2 contains only 12 parts by weight of carbon right so y gram ya y part of co2 
contains how much carbon right so what you can write is 44 by parts weight contains 12 so obviously y part contain how much 12 by 44 into y because y uh, gram of co2 was formed so this much co2 contains this much carbon so this much co2 will contain how much carbon now this is the carbon which con which is there in y gram of co2 you have to find out the percentage also so for that percentage you have to divide it by sample weight now how much sample you have taken of coal obviously w gram so you can write w and obviously percentage is there so you have to write 100 also so this is what the formula to find out percentage carbon 12 by 44 into y by w into 100 and uh, doing uh, the same thing with uh, percentage of hydrogen uh, you can say that uh, 18 parts by weight of h2o contains only two parts by weight of hydrogen so what about x parts by weight of h2o so obviously it's 2 by 18 into x divide by sample weight multiply by 100 will give you the percentage so 2 by 18 into x by w uh, into 100 would give you the percentage of hydrogen so that is how you're going to calculate but just make sure that here it is increase in weight so you just have to calculate the amount CaCl2 before absorption and after absorption so now let us go ahead why are we doing this what is the significance we want that percentage carbon and percentage hydrogen to be high because as per Dulong's formula if you have seen my previous video of Dulong's formula there we have seen that the greater the percentage of carbon hydrogen greater would be the calorific value so greater the percentage of carbon and a greater the percentage of hydrogen it is going to increase the calorific value so first and foremost significance is this secondly if a higher percentage of carbon is there it reduces the size of combustion chamber because that is how it reduces the size of you know volatile percentage volatile metal and uh, percentage ash also because if it is properly combustible then the volatile metals would not be more there so you uh, uh, cannot like suppose to make the big combustion chamber to resist the pressure uh, developed due to the formation of volatile matter and uh, that is how if the percentage of carbon is high other elements would be low and that helps in determining the uh, or designing the combustion chamber then percentage of carbon also forms the basis of classification of coal uh, you remember that the coal uh, ranking if you see it starts from peat to lignite to uh, subbutuminous then bituminous superbutuminous and anthracite this is what ranking of coal so percentage of carbon obviously forms the basis of classification of coal because higher the percentage of carbon the rank would be highest so you may say that the anthracite is highest to rank coal it is having highest percentage of carbon and followed by bituminous and then lignite so that is also a very important feature similarly hydrogen is always associated with volatile matter so that is how it affects the use of coal so you have to uh, act judicially and find out how much percentage in carbon and hydrogen are there and then we can utilize the particular sample as a fuel now let us go ahead with some calculations also like if they say that one gram of the accurately weighed coal sample was burnt in current of oxygen in combustion apparatus that means the Liebig apparatus is used and the combustion is done now the carbon and hydrogen of coal sample were converted into CO2 and H2O respectively. Yes, as per the reaction we have seen that. Now which were then absorbed respectively in KOH and CaCl2 tubes. So I guess you of known weight. So I guess you remember that KOH absorbs CO2 and CaCl2 absorbs H2. So the increase in the weight of KOH was 2.75 gram. Increase in the weight of CaCl2 is 0.45 gram. Find the percentage of carbon and hydrogen. So now if you remember the formula first we need to write what is increase in the weight what is the weight sample then we can apply the formula which was percentage of carbon increase in the weight of koh tube right because we have weighed koh before absorption and after absorption whatever is the increase we assume that much uh, co2 is formed by sample weight 12 by 44 into 100 so if you simply substitute these values you'll get your answer and likewise percentage of hydrogen increase in the weight of CaCl2 tube by sample weight into 2 by 18 into 100 so I hope you remember and that is how you're going to get the answer so it's that simple now let us go ahead with one more time here also the uh, initial things are same that you have to undergo the combustion CO2 and H2 are formed which are then absorbed in KOH and CaCl2 tubes of one gram weight each 
that means the free way of qh and cl2 cacl2 is 1 gram now the weight of qh tube became 4.08 gram and that of cacl2 became 1.11 gram after absorption find the percentage of carbon and hydrogen so i guess uh, the formula remains same increase in the weight by sample weight right but then what is the increase in the weight is not directly mentioned here they say that you started with 1 gram and the qh weight becomes 4.08 gram and that means the increase in the weight of qh is obviously 3.08 gram and so as you have to calculate it for calcium chloride you have to find out the increase i guess you can do that so 0.1167 gram you have to take and now if you use this value and utilize the same formula i guess you will be able to solve the numerical coming to the third one like if you increase the level of the numerical now what they say okay so now in this question uh, they says that the whole uh, sample is 2.5 gram and then again co2 and h2 were absorbed the increase in the weight is 6.2 and 1.5 find the percentage of carbon and hydrogen also they have given some composition of fuel and they asked you to find out hcv and lcv of the coal sample so how are you going to solve such type of questions first you have to write the increase in the weight of qh then write increase in the weight of cacl2 i hope you understand this represents the amount of co2 formed and this represents amount of h2o formed then the weight of coal sample is written so if we apply the similar formula percentage of carbon increase in the weight of co uh, qh tube and uh, like increase in the weight uh, sorry this is uh, this should be 6.2 and 6.2 into 12 by 100 1 by 44 and uh, this should be 1.5 right so uh, like so uh, let us start with one more type of question here what they say is 2.5 gram of coal sample is given to you uh, rest remains same and then the increase in the weight is given here then they said you have to find out percentage of carbon and hydrogen at the same time they have given you the sample composition also so you have to find out hcv and lcv of the coal sample now let's see how to solve such type of questions first you have to make this uh, qh tube and cacl2 tube you just have to write the increase in weight i hope you remember this is corresponding to the amount of co2 formed and this represents the amount of h2o formed so if you use the similar uh, formula percentage of carbon increase in the weight of qh by sample weight into 12 by 44 so this would be the uh, answer and similarly if you calculate it for percentage hydrogen so cacl2 uh, weight uh, which was like 1.5 and uh, into 2 and into 100 if you solve you will get this answer only so uh, now you have to find out gcv and lcv so i think you remember as per my previous video based on dulong's formula this is the dulong's formula wherein i have explained how this formula has came right so now if you want to substitute the values percentage carbon you have received 67.6 percentage hydrogen you have calculated 6.67 and rest percentage oxygen and sulfur is mentioned in the question so you simply have to substitute these values here and find out the gcv similarly in ncv uh, it is obviously gcv minus latent heat and as we remember that uh, latent heat of like standard value is 5 with 7 and 9 times uh, the weight of hydrogen would be latent heat uh, divided by 100 so 0.09 into percentage hydrogen so simple 0.09 percentage hydrogen is 6.67 multiplied by 5 with 7 so you will get the value of ncv so at the end you are able to solve the question wherein you can supply percentage carbon hydrogen hcv and lcv of a particular sample so uh, with that i think you are able to understand how to find out percentage carbon and hydrogen uh, as a part of ultimate analysis in uh, the next videos i would be discussing more about proximate and ultimate analysis both so till then uh, keep liking the video and do subscribe the channel thank you